Dad's playing beautifully tonight, isn't he? There's no finer artist. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, constantly influenced by the multitude of voices inside my head. Up front this week, according to an article by the Huffington Post and other online sources, one Arizona man may well owe his life to his fast food habit. Tucson resident Ryan Bishop was en route to the Pima County Fairgrounds and had just bit into a tasty taco when his driver's side window abruptly exploded. Assuming he had been hit by a rock, Bishop pulled over to inspect the damage, but when he opened his door, he was startled to hear the crack of gunfire whistling over his head. Wisely deciding that discretion was the better part of valor, Bishop dove back inside his car and rapidly drove away from the scene, and once he saw that no one was following, pulled over to the side of the road and called police to report the incident. It was then that Bishop suddenly realized the tasty taco he'd been eating had saved him from harm. As he had closed the window to stop his lunch from flying about the inside of the car, rather than having left it open. Shaken by the experience, Bishop explained to the officers that he normally would have been driving with the window down and his arm on the door, exactly where the bullet hole was located. Bishop was quoted as stating, I'm pretty sure that eating a taco saved my life, or at least stopped my arm from getting blown apart. While the Tucson Police Department is currently investigating the matter, with few leads to go on and little other information than the witness statement, they've labeled the incident as an act of criminal damage or malicious mischief. Our lucky Mr. Bishop was apparently unharmed by the encounter, sustaining only minor injuries during the attack, but forever left with an enduring love of tacos. For PNT's part, while we have to admit getting a cold shudder from Mr. Bishop's close save, we would be remiss if we did not make note of the heroic actions of the other passengers in the vehicle, who stayed cool, kept things together, and refused to crack under pressure. From fateful fajitas to elephant alcohol, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to South Africa, where one distillery is producing a drink you'll never forget. Mossel Bay residents Les and Paul Ansley have begun sales of Indlovu Gin, which is made with some rather unique ingredients. Fruits and flowers that have been digested by elephants. The pair got the idea while on safari after a park ranger described the digestive process of elephants. Realizing that the elephants would naturally be gathering many of the same ingredients that are found in gin, the couple, who are both scientists, had elephant dung sent to them and proceeded to test their theory through practical application. The ingredients are separated from the enormous piles of excrement by hand, washed repeatedly, dried and sterilized before being placed in what the Ansleys term their spice cabinet. Eventually, the purified poo, uh, sorry, ingredients, which include fruits, flowers, bark, and leaves, are infused with the gin, resulting in an end product that has been described as having a lovely, wooded, almost spicy flavor. The couple chose to name their creation in Dlovu, which is the Zulu word for elephant. The unusual offering is proving to be popular as word spreads of the drink, with tourists often bringing home several bottles for the folks back home. Those curious or brave enough to face the task can have a bottle of jumbo gin of their own for around $32 a bottle, 
Links to the Indolvu website are found in the description below. For PNT's part, we have to admire the Ansley's dedication to science as well as their unusual business acumen. But in this case, we'll have to take a pass on trying this particular pachyderm potion. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few moments. But first, a word from our sponsors. Looks like Mrs. Brady's getting acquainted with her new neighbor. Let's look over the back fence and see how things are going. Hello there. I've been meaning to come over and introduce myself. I'm Jane Brady. You couldn't have picked a better time to be neighborly. I'm so discouraged about my wash. Yours looks so much brighter and cleaner than mine. How on earth do you do it? Well, I had the same trouble before I found out about that wonderful new fab. You know, fab whitens as it washes and without bleaching. In fact, fab gets my clothes whiter without bleaching than any other product I ever heard of with bleach in the wash water. I took Mrs. Brady's advice and this time used fab. What a difference. Now my clothes are really white, a livelier white, and so clean. They smell fresh and sweet. Yes, Fab washes cleaner than any soap in the world in the hardest water. Gets out dirt, leaves no dulling soap scum. Fab brightens washable colors, and it's wonderfully mild to hands. <laughs> well, it looks as if Mrs. Brady has made a new friend. And another new customer for... Fab. Yes, more and more in every store. The folks all grab for Fab. Welcome back. And remember, if your laundry isn't bright enough, make sure you use Fab. Why, in no time at all, Fab will cut through any grease or grime that you might have accidentally spilled on your soft, cozy PNT official T-shirt, now available from our Teespring store. You can sit back and relax, sipping eggnog from one of our exclusive PNT coffee mugs, as Fab gently cleans away all your laundry cares. Be a good neighbor and get yours today. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a startling UFO sighting from Puebla, Mexico. Filmed earlier this month, the footage appears to show a number of strange orbs hovering and slowly rotating over the Puebla suburbs. Let's have a look at the footage. Ah, mira, están acá atrás, ¿sí? Mira, ve. No manches, ven a ver este. Ese se ve más, más grande. Ah, no más, está gigante. Y detrás de ese vienen otros dos. No es un globo aerostático. No manches. No, 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 pero no puede ser tan estático. A ver, ¿quién tira globos en esta zona? No, y ves que dice que dice el señor que, este, que son de fierro, de, o sea, de fierro. De metal. O sea, en esta zona, ¿quién va, quién va, quién va a tirar 
globos aerostáticos. Ajá, sí. ¿Cuántos años llevamos viviendo aquí? Más de 30 y ¿cuántas veces sucede esto? Jamás, ¿no? Porque no, no, es, es, no puede ser posible. Ve, ahí, viene, ahí va otro atrás. Ah, sí, ahí viene el otro. Pero se veía más cerca hace un rato. Acá viene sí. No se ve, ¿eh? Uh -huh. Pues yo nunca había pues visto. Pero ahí siguen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 en total. Nueve. Ahí hay 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. Ese es muy grande, ¿verdad? No, pues ya lleva más de 20 minutos De, 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 lo, madre, de lo que otro. yo estoy viendo Ay, sí. ¿A dónde, Ese es más largo Acá, acá de... Ah, ya lo vi, ya lo vi sí. lleva subiendo. Como si... Está como larguito ah, Como... ya lo vi Como hormiga Así como, como dos cuerpos Ya lo vi Ya lo vi Está dando como, como, giro. como giros, ajá. Mira, ahí ya subió como la colita. Es obvio que quieren ser vistos, ¿no? Globos aerostáticos que se acomodan. No, no eso no, no puede ser, ¿no? <risa> no puede ser. Y los otros siguen ahí. ¿Cómo qué distancia será? Como un kilómetro. No, no. Pueden, no está muy lejos, ¿eh? No, no están tan lejos. Bueno, sí, no, no hay tanta referencia. Sí. Pero voy a dejar mi teléfono grabando. ¿Por qué, ¿Por qué se perdería? Oh,
So what were the strange white objects filmed this November 10th filling the skies over Puebla, Mexico? Let's run down the possibilities. First things first, these are obviously not birds, clouds, stars, meteors, or most known atmospheric phenomena, such as ball lightning. A group of drones flying in formation would make far too much noise to be a match for the sighting here, and it would also be difficult, as well as expensive, to arrange. The slow speed with which the objects appear and move into position would be more in keeping with our next possibility. Balloons. Balloons such as Luminaria could be and are often mistaken for UFOs, and this very possibility is seemingly confirmed by a comment left on the witness's YouTube page stating that the objects were peasant torch balloons launched from a nearby stadium. However, the witness disputes this explanation, replying that he had seen other orbs vanish and even change shape. He also states, I don't think they were balloons since they were static for more than an hour. Firm statements, certainly worth investigating. First, PNT has to comment on the fact that the actual recording of the event is over four minutes long, occurs during full daylight hours, and is filmed in 4K resolution. This is a remarkable change of pace from the normal shot in 240p using a potato cam smeared with Vaseline footage that we usually have to work with. Alright, we're overstating things a bit, but certainly not by much. Although the witness did commit our number one pet peeve, zooming in while recording, for the majority of the footage, he keeps the camera zoomed out, allowing us to use the foreground elements for further reference. Two other big pluses are that the phone was held sideways or horizontally instead of vertically and stayed relatively still throughout the duration of the recording. As a result of all these factors, PNT was able to stabilize the entire video with minimal difficulty. With all that said and done, and with a plausible explanation already in hand, we looked for evidence that the objects could be balloons. The first, and most obvious lead, was to compare the location of the stadium mentioned to that of the sighting, which was impossible to do, given that we do not have a specific location for this witness. The stadium lies in the northeast part of Puebla, and balloons launched from it could easily be carried aloft in any given direction depending upon the prevailing air currents. A search of the stadium's event calendar yielded no additional clues, with no events listed for the date in question. The nearest event to the date in question took place on November 8th, two days too early to be a match for the sighting, and with one additional problem. The November 8th match took place at a different stadium entirely. These facts would seem to cast serious doubt on the possibility of an aerial display coming from the stadium, but it does not completely rule it out. The stadium could have been rented by a private party, and it is worth noting that there are two other parts of the complex, a baseball stadium as well as an outdoor running track, both of which could have been used for the launch. So, with the stadium launch explanation starting to deflate a bit, we kept digging, and this is where things got interesting. But more on that in a moment. Setting aside the balloon hypothesis for the time being, PNT moved on to the next likeliest possibility, commercial or military aircraft. As is our usual procedure, we searched for commercial airports as well as nearby military bases, and found no shortage of either, especially military installations. The Puebla International Airport is a major feature of the city, supporting both private and commercial traffic, and there are at least a dozen military bases that could account for any other air traffic. Here, however, we run into the same dead end that we often find with this particular set of possibilities. That there are no known private or commercial aircraft that can match the silhouette or maneuvers of the objects that were recorded. Military craft suffer from the same limitations, at least known military craft. 
There always exists the possibility that this could be a test of a project in development, perhaps a surveillance net of some kind. But without confirmation from military sources, this cannot be conclusively proven or disproven as the cause of the sightings. Flares are easily disposed of simply by the fact that the sighting occurs during daylight hours and that the objects display none of the characteristics of flares, intense luminosity that gradually dims before burning out altogether. Missing also are the telltale smoke trails generated by flares as they burn, which would have easily been visible under daylight conditions. Finding no help with these possibilities, but still not quite done with our friend the balloon, we turned back to the footage itself. Whenever PNT analyzes a piece of footage, especially during the motion tracking process, we view it frame by frame, and so many times that frankly, we get sick of looking at the damn thing. But this process also affords us the opportunity to catch things that we might otherwise miss, such as the abrupt and extremely rapid movement displayed by the upper object, seen here. At first, PNT thought that the movement might have been caused by camera shake, but after carefully comparing the position of the trees against that of the objects, we could not account for the rapid change in position. Under negative blue filter, this movement becomes even more apparent, and appears to blow a large hole in these objects being sky lanterns. If this motion were merely caused by a sudden gust of wind, it would not be able to abruptly stop and then maintain a steady position again. We caught more movements in the later sections of the tape, as multiple objects join the others and form precise geometric patterns. In this case, a slowly rotating triangle. While virtually undetectable at normal speed, these movements became much easier to see when the clip speed was increased, with the triangle formed by the orbs rotating in a counterclockwise direction. While we could not positively confirm any of the objects changing shape as the witness states, there were several points where our upper orb appeared to morph but nothing that could not be accounted for by digital noise on the recording, which is yet another reason not to zoom in while filming. So this leaves us with the following questions. Could a display of sky lanterns really be the source of the sighting? Logically, could such a lightweight object, usually made of bamboo or a balsa wood frame covered with thin paper, be able to hold position against the wind currents rapidly change that position within the span of two seconds, and then form a perfect and slowly rotating triangle. This would seem to be a close shave for our friend Occam's razor, and leaves us free to explore the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. Is it possible that the objects are exactly what they appear to be? Unknown craft piloted, or perhaps controlled by an intelligence unknown to us? As far-fetched as this idea may seem to be, there may be evidence to back it up. Mexico, and especially Mexico City, which lies to the northwest of Puebla, have long been known in UFO circles as a hotbed of activity, with some of the most compelling sightings and videos ever recorded coming from the area. A perfect example is this 1997 video that apparently shows a spinning saucer flying low over Mexico City. Sightings of strange craft in Mexico are not limited to modern times, however, with an 1883 sighting where astronomer Jose Bonilla observed more than 300 dark, unidentified objects crossing before the sun as a historical precedent. PNT has covered several MUFON reports originating in the Baja area of Mexico, and as we can see, there is no shortage of sightings. But the question remains, what are they, and why have they come? Are they peaceful visitors studying and cataloging the diversity of our biosphere before we ruin it forever? As PNT has found over the course of our investigations, there is a common thread to major sightings that could support this, that these incidents often occur directly over or very near wildlife sanctuaries. 
and this case is no different. But what if the motivations of our mysterious visitors are not so benign? As we know all too well from our own history, scientific data can often serve dual purposes and dual masters. Any data collected on the human race's biosphere, anatomy, and technologic level could easily be used against us in order to stage an invasion or to aid in capturing resources that are common on our world but could be scarce elsewhere. Given the advanced technology of a race able to traverse the vast distances between the stars, this would be an easy task and we would be helpless to prevent it. Will we inevitably find ourselves at the mercy of just such a hostile alien race, or is there perhaps a more benevolent possibility that there may be forces protecting Earth from just such a situation? Is it that far a stretch from believing in a hostile alien species bent on exploitation to believing in the idea that there may be an organization similar to Star Trek's Federation acting as a security force, keeping opportunistic races who might find us easy prey from conquering our world, and allowing us to mature as a unique race capable of later joining the greater galactic community? Whatever the answer may be, it has become increasingly apparent that as tensions across the globe rise, so too do reports of mysterious craft. The only question then remaining is whether we will take advantage of the breathing space that we have been provided with. At this critical juncture in our history, will we choose as a species to grasp the magnificent destiny that lies before us, or will we instead allow ourselves to slip backwards into the petty differences that divide us. Against the vast backdrop of the universe and the certain reality that we are not alone, are divisions over politics, religion, and race really all that important? Points to ponder for all of us living on this rare and precious jewel that we call planet Earth. But whether or not the objects caught on tape moving slowly through the skies over Puebla, Mexico earlier this month were a display of sky lanterns launched from a nearby stadium, a secret military project with an unknown purpose, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of The Paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts out the truth.